Good evening, Father's Heart Digital Church. Goedenavond. Welcome to this um, Home Fellowship group teaching. And uh, as we wait for the people to come online, tonight I have the privilege of sharing with you the group teaching on motivational gifts. And it is uh, teaching number 71. And what a privilege to visit with you on a Thursday evening. And uh, I trust that you enjoyed the teachings that we played for you the previous three Thursdays from our library from the Bible College. And uh, tonight it's my privilege to be with you again. And what a privilege it is. I looked forward to this. I even put on some nice clothing for you tonight. So Luigi, I trust that you find that in order, buddy. Um, hello, Lynn, Irene and Jack, Michelle, Rihanna, Karen, uh, Flora, Lynn, Faye, Anne. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this call. And um, as I as I do this, my um, uh, my mouse decided to die on me, and uh, I have a problem with my system as due to the fact that I have no mouse to work with tonight. So um, this is going to be fun. Um, this is absolutely going to be be fun. Um, uh, because I have, uh, <laughs> uh, let me quickly just uh, see how I can help you. Um, just give me one little moment and that's not going to work. So um, yeah, that's the beauty of being live. So let me grab the, grab the book and um, go to the book. I cannot see my notes. I cannot change my PowerPoint slides as uh, my mouse decided to die on me and um, if someone will just ask my wife to come and visit me in the room because she is not with me in the room if someone can help her um, ask her to come assist me i'll appreciate that um she doesn't know um well she's on the call so leave me help okay so tonight we talk about the motivational gifts and allow me to start the motivational gifts and um, by explaining it this way and I, i've created the powerpoint to show you which i will not be able to show you now hence the fact that um my uh, Apple mouse decided to not do what the mouse should do. It needs um, to be charged. Um, so the motivational gifts, essentially, we need to just position, position the motivational gifts. And the key is for us to understand that when we look at the motivational gifts, we need to go and see that where the motivational gifts fit in. And uh, fortunately, I have my book with me, so um, I cannot page what's on my screen but I can page my um, my book so uh, no it's fine joy um, I see that you have load, sh load shedding sorry for that I don't have load shedding I just don't have a mouse so um, cool um, so if we go look at the motivational gifts the motivational gifts are given to us by the father and we need to understand that and um, we read that in Romans 12 verse 6 to 8 and um, when we go and, and read that and uh, we go and understand what it's about, you'll see that it's um, having the gifts um, differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us, let us them, if prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence and he who um, exhorts um, I cannot see that that last part my uh, my uh, uh, system just uh, kill that for me my apology but the key is if we go look at the motivational gifts the Godhead give us gifts the Father gives us the motivational gifts as I said we find that in Romans 12 verse 6 to 8 what I just read to you. So Romans 12 verse 6 to 8 is important because that's the motivational gifts. And these motivational gifts are given to us by the Father. These motivational gifts will tell you who you are naturally as a person. These motivational gifts nat is naturally who you are as a person. And um, a lot of people use these motivational gifts that they receive from the Father in their business in their everyday life, in their work. Um, if you ask someone to describe that person, they will give you a little, a little one-liner 
out of the motivational gifts of the person. So uh, a, a person is described by their motivational gifts in, in the worldly order, where we, in the world where people live. If you ask someone about a person, they will tell you a little one-liner about their motivational gifts without them knowing that it is a motivational gift that was given to that person from birth by the Father. But then we also have two other kinds of gifts that we have. We have a gift that we receive from the Son, from Jesus Christ, the Son. So the gift that we receive from the, from the Son is the fivefold ministry. The gifts that we read about in Ephesians 4 and verse 11. So if you go read Ephesians 4 verse 11, you'll find the gifts, the, the five um, gifts of the fivefold ministry. The apostle, the teacher, the prophet, the um, evangelist, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, someone type me, what's the other one? Please help me, type the, type the other one, the fivefold ministry. So uh, Ephesians 4 verse 11, we find the, the gifts, um, the, fi the fivefold ministry. So that's the gift that is given in to you by the Son. Now this gift you receive, you, the, the gift in the fivefold ministry, you receive. Every one of us, when we get born again, um, I see Cedric says Apostle. Um, Cedric, if Apostle was the one that I shorted, thank you. Um, I, I've, I've mentioned five, uh, four of the five. So, um, But if we go look at the, the gifts from the Godhead, the gifts from the Son, and uh, we go look, look at the gifts for the fivefold ministry, these gifts you receive, Shepherd, thank you, Gunther Shepherd. That's the one that I missed. Okay, uh, Shepherd. So th th these gifts that um, you get from, from the Son, the, the fivefold ministry gifts, they are an anointing. And um, they, you are anointed. You've received them as an anointing from the Son. But then we also have the spiritual gifts. So we have the, the motivational gifts that were given into the, from you from the Father. That's from birth. That is in your inclination. That's who you are. That's the, the description of who you are. People, some people just develop them more than others. And then the fivefold ministry gifts that you get from the Son, from Jesus Christ, and then the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit that we receive from the Spirit. And we read that in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8 to 10. Now, if you go look at um, the gifts of the Spirit, those are important for us because those are the gifts that you and I give back to the community. The gifts of the Spirit. And how do I receive the gifts of the Spirit? The moment that I born again, I receive the indwelling Christ, the Holy Spirit in me. I then get baptized in the Holy Spirit to develop, to open up this gift, to start using the gift. And from there, I will then go find my gifts, the gifts that I operate in as gifts of the Spirit. And these gifts, we can develop, we can grow in them as we get to know the Word, as we get to, to know the Word, as we get to declaring the Scriptures of our lives. We can, we can build ourselves up in our most holy faith. And in that, we can develop the gifts of the Spirit. And any person can, can operate in all the gifts of the Spirit. It's not, not one or two gifts that are for a specific person or not. Okay, so everyone can, can uh, go in the gifts of the Spirit. But tonight, we talk about the motivational gifts. So tonight, we're not talking about the, the fivefold ministry uh, gifting. We're not talking about the gifts of the Spirit. We're talking about the motivational gifts. And the motivational gifts are those that we receive from the Father. Those that are part of your DNA, part of who you are. And these motivational gifts are seven, as we've read in um, Romans 12, verse 6 to 8. Um, I've read them for you, and um, Romans 12, verse 6 to 8. And these seven gifts, I want to explain to you. Now, the easiest way to explain them is to, to turn this topic on its head and start at the last part of what is in the, in the manual that Dr. Frost gave us. And I've created you a nice PowerPoint slide to show you that, uh, which I will not be able to, to show you now. And, um, but uh, it's okay. Um, I will just uh, tell you what it is and, and tell you what it is about. So if you go look at the, the, um, how we identify these gifts. So how to identify 
the gifts in us. So it's important that we go and see how we identify the gifts. If you have someone that need to to um, to uh, understand these um, motivational gifts and uh, how do we identify motivational gifts in a in a person, it is uh, it is very simple. We purely go and. Um, Liefie, help me not, as I believe. Sorry, not my mouse, my upcharge sit, as I believe. Thank you. Sorry, I just had to ask uh, Liefie to put the mouse on charge um, so that I, I can do the second session with you with the mouse. So, um, the motivational gift. So, how do I identify the gift in us? How do we identify these motivational gifts in you? And there's a little story in the manual. If you go read the manual, you see it's at the end. But for me, explaining this whole um, motivational gifts it's easier to start there and we start with with um, uh, somebody no, uh, with the story and the story goes like this somebody knocks a bowl of pudding off a table what is your response so somebody knocks a bowl of pudding off the table how do you react because that will de de determine what are your natural gifting? What are your motivational gifts? Remember, a motivational gift is to motivate the body of Christ, to motivate the people, to get them to understand where we're going and motivate them to, to work together the, the same uh, goal. So the motivational uh, gifts, someone knocks a bowl of pudding off the table, and what is your response? And uh, the response is, is so uh, cool if you go look at it and then go look at the giftings then go look at the motivational gifts so that you know which one you are naturally and remember you can have um, you can have more than one of these motivational giftings but one of them will be the strongest one one of them will stand out always and as I said earlier remember when you ask people to define a person to tell you something about the person Go read between the lines. When, when I ask someone about a person and say, but tell me something about him, I read between the lines because I want to go find the motivational gifting of that person. And people will, most of the times, in the world, they don't know the word, they're not part of going to church, or maybe they go to church, but they don't understand the word that well. So they don't have a clue about motivational gifting. But still, when they give you a one-liner of the person, Nine times out of ten, you will find a motivational gift in there if you just listen for it. And this is the answers. This is the key. Um, the, prof the prophetic person, the first motivational gift is prophetic. That's what happens when you don't listen. So they want to bring correction and guidance. The server, the person who is the server, the person serving their community, their natural gift, the motivational gift is serving. Let me clean it up. So if you're the person that will say, oh, sorry, let me clean it up. Let me, sorry for that. Let me help you. Let it clean it up. You're the server. The teacher will say, it was too close to the edge. The teacher will want to teach you something from it. And I want you to listen. Every one of you on the call, listen now where you are, where you slot in. Then we will go look at the biblical interpretation of that. The exhorter will say, next time we will have are putting earlier the exhorter will, will help you will exhort you from any blame as if it's their blame we exhort you from that it's it's i'm to blame i've given the pudding for you at last maybe next time we'll have the pudding earlier so that you don't bump, bump it off the table the giver the giver will say i will buy a new bowl i will buy another bowl i'll i'll buy another bowl because i'm a giver i want to give you back your bowl that has just broken the leader will say, get the bucket. Get the bucket. The leader will organize the people. The leader will be the one that, um, and, and in the motivational gifts, that's called organizer, the organizing, the one that will always organize. Um, that's seen as, that person is seen as a leader. And the leader will get the team to come and clean this up and, and get it over and done with and let, it, let us continue and focus on what we need to do. So the leader will say, get the bucket. Let's... Uh, uh, the leader will not go fetch the bucket. The leader will say, go get the bucket. The leader will say, we now need a bucket to clean this up. Go, go find the bucket. The mercy, the person with motivational gift of mercy will say, don't worry, dear. It has happened before. So the person with mercy that comes to the table with mercy will say, don't worry. Uh, it happened before. It's not, it's not the worst. So 
Let me run through them and their biblical description. Now, as we said that before we start with this, go find, go identify yourself with how you will respond and go find which of these motivational gifts are your strong natural giftings that you have and that you using as your personality in your everyday life with people in your business, whatever you do, um, go find it. So if you go look at the seven motivational gifts and remember we said it is given into you by God to build into you as your motivational gift for the community. We, we are a community. Um, being a, 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 a servant of God, a lover of Christ, a fellow believer, that means you part of a community. And this, these motivational gifts are a gifting to us to motivate and, and serve the community. So the prophetic, their focus is sin is exposed and relationships are restored. So the focus of in for those with a, a prophetic motivational gifting will be will go look at the sin is exposed, the the relationship is restored. We will um, so they always go and they bring correction, they help and they guide. He or she will have a strong sense of right and wrong and speak out against compromise and evil. So the the prophetic will will strongly talk about against um, uh, uh, compromise and evil. The biblical example, Peter encouraged men and women to believe in Christ, to repent and to live according to the truth of God's word. So that's what, what Peter brought to the table as the person that's got the prophetic motivational gift. Um, we find the, the biblical example, the scripture in um, Acts 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, Peter, when the times of refreshing shall come uh, from the presence of the Lord. So that is the motivational gift of the prophetic to bring guidance, to help, to, to um, assist us to um, be restored. In our um, relationship. Then we go to serving. Their focus is driven to demonstrate love. By meeting practical needs. So the servers. The people that that um, serve. Um, the community. That serve the brothers and sisters. In the Lord. They always demonstrate love. So when we, when we talk about these motivational gifts. In the world we talk about your love language. What is your love language? Have you ever heard that? We talk about your love language. What's the thing that's natural? What's the thing that, that you naturally do? And if someone see you do that and they recognize that you're busy doing that, that's, your, that's what you um, like to experience and do. So serving the server is available to see a project through to the end and enjoys doing physical work. So the server will be behind the scene. The server will be behind the scene the server will do the work. The server will be the one going through the night to make sure that they serve the, the community. And the biblical example is Timothy. He had a great desire to serve the church of God and he ministered to Apostle Paul in many ways. So Timothy is an example of the server. And you'll see later we will use Timothy again as an example in one of the others as well. And um, uh, we read that in Philippians 2 Verse 19 to 22. Um, I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you. I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your, for your state. For all seek their own, not the things with which are Jesus Christ. But you know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he hath served with me in the gospel. And that we read in Philippians 2, verse 19 to 20, a description from Paul with regards to Timothy. An absolute server, a person whose motivational gift is to serve in the house. And um, it's important that we listen to this, um, all these motivational gifts, and give, us, uh, um, give our attention to it. Because once you facilitate the home fellowship, once you're part of a home fellowship, you will know that you, you contribute in a home fellowship naturally because of your motivational gifts. And um, for, for this, the facilitators, it's important for you to go and find and uh, to go and find and hear what the uh, motivational gift of every person in your home fellowship is so that you can 
pull that out of them so that you empower them to be comfortable, to be able to bring their love language to the, to the table, to bring and to come and help and assist in the home fellowship. Then we go to teaching, the, sorry, the mo motivational gift of teaching, and um, uh, their focus is passionate about discovering and validating truth. So the teacher is always about the truth. The teacher is always about the truth. So the teacher will come and they will teach. They will make sure that people have enough uh, knowledge. Um, I had the privilege of, of uh, having coffee with one of my uh, dear pastor friends that also passed in Pretoria um, this morning. And he's a true teacher. He just worries about the people. Do the people get the word in? Do the people use the word? Do the people understand the word? Do they know the word? Do they get into the word? Why? Because his motivational gift is teaching. He is a teacher. A teacher is particularly concerned with the accuracy of information. They will tell you when that is, when you say something and you're not absolutely accurate, the, the teacher will come and help you and say, you know what, we find scripture and verse there and that is how you interpret it and that's how it's, a, it's applied. A teacher is particularly concerned with the um, accuracy of information, especially church doctrine. And he's often gifted with research abilities. So they have the ability to, because they're naturally gifted in that field, they naturally have the ability to go and live that out and to fulfill that in the community. The biblical example we find in Luke, um, and in Luke 1 verse 3 to 4, Luke had the desire to verify and preserve the truth about both Jesus' life and the information of the church. So Luke has recorded a lot of um, what happened in that time for us that we can go and read it and his way of of recording it was different than the others because he was all about the information i have to preserve the information i have to preserve the truth about jesus christ and uh, the scripture as i said is luke 1 verse 3 to 4 and i read the scripture it seemed good to me also having a perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest, mightest now the certainty of those things, wherein thou hast been instructed. So he was all about making sure, he records the history, making sure the, the, um, the next generation will have the truth and uh, will actually have the information that they can go go. Um, look at it and that's the teacher then the exhorting the motivational gift of exhorting their focus is they want to see believers grow in grow to spiritual maturity they want to to help and assist you to grow to maturity they want to give you the the word but then you have to go to maturity for them it's all about getting you to go to maturity and um, an exhorter is an encourager at heart and is often involved in the ministries of counseling teaching and discipleship discipleship so they the encouragers they are the ones that will come and root for you they are the one that will edify you they are the one that will push you to go to the next level and um, we find the biblical example paul demonstrates his love for the church and he's concerned that believers all over the world grow to spiritual maturity. And the, the scripture verse in reference there, we find in Colossians 1 verse 27 to 29. Christ in you, the hope of glory. How many times have we, have we read this? Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. And um, so those are the exhorters, the, the people that will help you, will cover you, and they will always encourage you to, to go read, go read, go spend more time, go study, go pray, go do. Then we get to the givers, and um, the givers in any community, the, the givers are very um, important for any community. So the motivational gift of giving, their focus is they want to use financial resources wisely in order to give um, to give to meet the needs of others. And um, the, 
the key of a giver is usually they are good at finding best deals, um, noticing overlooked needs and maintaining a budget. So the givers are people that will that will give, but they will also be very resourceful with um, very resourceful with um, with what they what they do and um, with where they spend their money and where they spend the money of the of the um, of the church so we need we need givers in our lives and um, the biblical example of uh, givers and before I do that allow me to just say this the biggest problem with givers is givers will sometimes give more than what they can afford to give so givers need to go always and go and look and and have an accountability partner because sometimes giver will give givers will give more than what they can afford to give and sometimes their own families can run short if they don't go and check this biblically biblically and go and see to what extent they are able to give when jesus called matthew to become a disciple matthew immediately gave us his lucrative job as a tax collector for the romans so um, matthew was a giver as jesus passed from uh, forth from hence he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the at the receipt of custom and he said unto him follow me and he arose and followed him Matthew 9 9 so Matthew was a giver and he gave up his lucrative job he, he's gave, he gave up his lucrative job to give into Christ um, so then we go to organizing and uh, we go to the the uh, motivational gift of organizing and let me just see if i have a, a mouse back my apology for that ladies and gentlemen and um, i have a mouse back oh, how cool is that um, so i can uh, i can go back to my to my notes and uh, i've done this yeah you know, without uh, without my notes so there we go so then if we go to the the giver um, remember I said the giver must make sure that they don't give more than what they can give. Givers often avoid the limelight. So it's not surprising that even in the gospel written by Matthew, we find very little personal information about him. Givers use the gift to motivate the community without the spotlight on them. And um, then we go to organizing. Uh, remember organizing, we call the leaders. Um, yes, Francis, the mouse is back. Thank you. Um, their focus is to accomplish tasks and solve problems through analysis and delegation. These people make natural leaders and organizers sometimes get the wrath of the people on them because people think they try and want the limelight. But all of, as a matter of fact, they care for the community as they organize and they do. They step into a place and they just organize and they will see what is short and they will, they will command the troops. And some people don't take kindly to that. An organizer offers the discern the talents and abilities of others and know how those individuals can best serve within a ministry or in a particular project. The biblical example, Lydia heard the apostle preach the, and responded with faith in God. As a business owner and persuasive woman of faith, Lydia used the resources to help meet Paul's needs and she welcomed the missionaries into her home. And we know the story about Lydia, the purple um, the, the businesswoman selling the purple and um, Acts 16 verse 15 when she was baptized and a household she besought us saying if you had judged me to be faithful to the Lord come into my house and abide there and sorry she constrained us so she's an organizer she saw that they need a place to stay she immediately just uh, given them the answer and people with a motivational gift of organizing must ensure that they focus on Christ to ensure they they focus on the bigger picture and not on people coming in alliance against them because a lot of time people who are not good at organizing stuff people who are not good leaders are threatened by the organizers and they they can stand in, stand in alliance against them and leaders lead but some people see that as threatening and uh, we need to encourage the leaders and we need to give them the space to do what they do best, serving the community in problem solving and leading. The last one is the motivational gift of mercy. 
and uh, the motivational gift of mercy um, uh, sensitive uh, these people are sensitive to the emotional and spiritual needs of others they are so essential in any in any community um, the mercy givers I don't know if that's a, an actual word but a mercy giver is drawn to people in need and seek to demonstrate compassion understanding and love to them the motivational gift of mercy will be there to serve the people without any focus on them they will work behind the scenes but effectively and uh, to get to the body the biblical example john john had the gift of mercy the book of john and little john uh, better known as uh, one two and three john share many insights into the love of of god and his work in the heart of of the believer um, john 13 verse 34 to 35 a new commandment i give unto you that you all love one another as i have loved you that you also love one another but this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one another so um, the the important part is for us to know that mercy givers are people willing to carry the burdens of the community each individual at a time the whole community's burdens but each individual at, individual at a time they are important as people to see uh, for the for the people to see and experience the love of christ though that's what we see mercy givers as doing and um, the key is for us to go find your gifting to go identify your gifting and go ask 20 people around you to just tell you something about who they see you and nine times out of ten out of that you will be able to go pick and say but you know what this is my love language this is who i am this is my motivational gift that God given unto me. Maybe there's one or two or a little of them, but go find it, go pursue that, because that will give you freedom to operate in the house, freedom to serve the community. In summary, know and operate um, in your gift. We need you. As Home Fellowship, we need every one of these gifts. As a, com as a community, we need every one of these gifts. As a as a congregation, as a church, we the church, we need these gifts. And thank you for every one of you identifying your gift, your natural gifting, your love language, and come and bring it to the table and serve God's people. Lord, we just come and say thank you that we can know that we have a motivational gift given in by you as part of who we are. Allow us to go find each and every one of us, to go find our individual niche gifting so that we can Come and serve your community in freedom. We ask that in Jesus' name. I bless every person under the sound of my voice to go and find your motivational gifting and be fruitful in it. In Jesus' name. Amen.